Hi everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome back to Project Mustalon, the Weasel Seed World project. First of all, I want to thank you all so much for all the kind, encouraging comments I received on episode 1. I never imagined so many people would be interested in this series, and it puts a huge smile on my face to know that you all enjoyed it so much. A lot of people even told me about their own ideas for Seed Worlds that I can't wait to see come to life. I am of the belief that everyone should try their hand at speculative evolution, regardless of talent or ambition. You guys also gave me some very valuable feedback, and a lot of great ideas for creatures and directions I could go with this project, and I'm looking forward to exploring them all further. Now, that being said, I do have a bit of a confession to make. You see, I've actually been lying to all of you. For among the weasels you see here, one is actually an imposter. More than one person pointed out in episode 1 that skunks are in fact not mustelids at all, but belong to their own family, Mephididae. Which is definitely an oversight on my part, and I wasn't intentionally trying to deceive anyone. But in the interest of science and education, however, I think it's very important that I address it. So, Project Mustelon is now Planet of the Mustaloids. Although it is also the planet of some rodents, fish, and one reptile, so for simplicity's sake I'll be keeping the tagline, World of Weasels. Also just because it's catchier. So, with that out of the way, let's dive right into the meat of this episode. Forests are important for many reasons. Not only are they among the biggest suppliers of oxygen on the planet, but they also provide ample shelter and habitat for numerous species of wildlife. The same goes for Mustelon, and in the early to middle stages of the Inceptocene, many species have taken advantage of the lack of earthly competition and have flourished in the forests and woodlands of the planet by making their homes in the trees themselves. The first species we'll be looking at today is Gulophilus arboreus, the panther glutton. If you hadn't already guessed from the name, this is a descendant of the wolverine. Over many generations, these wolverines have specked into tree climbing and have converged on a niche similar to that of the big cats of Earth. They've evolved more hook-shaped claws to make climbing easier, and have become expert ambush hunters, often waiting in the branches of trees for prey to wander just within range for them to leap down and take them by surprise. Just like their ancestors, panther gluttons possess a powerful bite, and are capable of breaking open and devouring the bones of their prey along with the meat. Panther gluttons require a lot of food to sustain themselves and tend to be more solitary, although mothers can often be seen hunting with their cubs well after they've been raised into adulthood. While panther gluttons have been very successful in the niche they've adopted, they certainly aren't the only wolverine descendants to have success, but more on them in future episodes. For now, the second mustelid we'll be looking at is Dendromastella cautagrippus, aka the pretensile hailed weasel. These are descendants of the long-tailed weasel that have become significantly more arboreal than their ancestors, evolving longer digits and hook-shaped claws for gripping branches, as well as, you guessed it, a prehensile tail to help them navigate safely through the trees. Much like their panther glutton cousins, prehensile-tailed weasels are also solitary hunters, and like to make their homes in hollowed-out trees. Although unlike the panther gluttons, who are just as comfortable hunting on the ground as they are in the trees, prehensile-tailed weasels prefer to hunt almost exclusively in the trees and seldom come down to the forest floor. Mustelids aren't the only ones making a home for themselves in the trees, however. We'll also be looking at three descendants of the grey squirrel and how much they've changed over the generations. To start with, say hello to Frondivorous arborei, the leaf-eating squirrel. These squirrels have evolved to take advantage of leaves and flowering plants as a food source and their physiology has changed to match this new diet. A shorter muzzle and broad, almost flattened incisors allow them to slice through vegetation, and an enlarged sesum and complex digestive system helps them squeeze every bit of nutrients that they can out of the leaves they eat. Antomimus insectivorus, the beetle squirrel, however, couldn't be more different from their leaf-eating cousins. Beetle squirrels have a much simpler digestive system and a strong stomach acids to break down the exoskeletons of the insects they eat. Although they're called beetle squirrels, they aren't picky eaters by any means. Agile bodies and strong limbs allow them to pursue their prey and even dig through the bark and soil to find grubs and larvae. Felisciurus magnus, the cat squirrel, gets the best of both worlds. Being bigger and more omnivorous allows them to take advantage of multiple different food sources. These opportunistic feeders will eat anything from leaves to nuts to fruits to insects and even the occasional small vertebrate. They also tend to forage alongside other individuals of their species to have more eyes and noses to find where the good food is, as well as a means of protection from predators, although their size makes them a formidable opponent on their own. The last animal we'll be looking at today is a descendant of the green anole. This is Terolanus ceruleocephalus, the gliding anole. 
These lizards lived similarly to their ancestors, with the key distinction of being able to glide through the trees using a flap of skin extending from their wrists to their ankles. An extra long tail also allows for better balance with climbing and gliding. These lizards may be small, but with no flying vertebrates anywhere on Mustalon, they're definitely a lineage to keep an eye on. Thank you all so much for watching. If you'd like to see this project eventually become a printed book, consider supporting me on Patreon. Patrons will get all kinds of rewards, such as getting early access to videos and works in progress, your name in the credits of videos, and even a sneak peek at Mustalon species that'll be exclusive to the book. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay creative and stay curious.